Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can add game objects to a scene with a script that will allow them to be picked up, added to the player's money or inventory, to play a sound effect, and finally to have the game object destroy itself after it's been picked up. So you get a result that's something like this. So in order for this to work, your player object should already have a controller script attached to it of some kind, something to control the player, allowing it to move around on the screen, and also to manage things like an inventory and money. I'm gonna assume you've set all that up already. Uh, also, we want to have a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D added to it, assuming it's a 2D game. If it's 3D, then obviously you use the rigid body and the box collider 3D versions. Assuming you have that set up, we can go up to game object at the top, do 2D object and sprite, and we'll call this new sprite item or money or whatever you want to call it. And, and let's just select a sprite from my assets. Now this sprite, of course, we want to bring it into the game scene at 000 or wherever. So here we have our item money sprite added in. In order to make it an item which we can pick up, we're going to need to create a script. We should also add in a box collider 2D. So the box collider 2D is going to have is trigger set. And if you need to edit the collider, you can hit edit collider there. But Okay, uh, I need to get over on the scene tab. You should be working on the scene tab. Uh, so on the scene tab, we can edit our box collider, hitting edit collider there. And you can see that by default, because this is just a simple 32 by 32 pixel sprite, uh, the box collider is already set up for us. So now we can reposition this where we're gonna wanna pick it up in the scene. And we need to add a script to it. So I'm gonna go add component here and I'm gonna call the script money pickup. So new script, create an add, and let's go into it and edit it. So we're gonna keep it relatively simple here. Uh, what we want to pick up for the player is just gonna be money. So I'm gonna call it public int money value. And then when the player picks it up, this amount, will be added to the player's stash of money. Just as easily, you could have the item be picked up and added to the inventory by defining something like a public game item script, uh, done separately, of course, which can contain all kinds of things like the value when you sell it to the shop or the statistics on the item. And I'll show two ways to add either money or a game object to a list that exists inside of the player script. In other words, the inventory list. So we're going to need a couple pretty simple methods here. The first is going to be public void. So it needs to be on trigger enter 2D. It must be this exact. If you're editing in Visual Studio uh, 2017, it'll highlight this blue. I, I believe that's because we're overwriting this method, which already actually exists in the game object. Um, and defining some things that will happen when the event triggers. Uh, so this will take a Collider 2D as a parameter here. So by default, it's called Collision. And what we can take that Collision object and do is to see if it contains a player controller. And this is a script you've defined, so it may or may not be called player controller. And we're gonna try to do a get component call on the Collision game object. So component, make sure you spell that right. And we're looking for player controller. So I just need to import this really quickly. And so what this will do is if the collision object, which should be the player, but could technically be other things, has a player controller game object attached to it, then it's gonna store it in this player controller player variable. And if that's the case, then that means that player is not gonna be equal to null. It's null if it does not find a player controller game object. So it's either going to be a player controller or null. And if it's not null, then we want to allow the player to pick up that game object. So what comes after this, you could create it as a separate method if you want, uh, pick up money or something like that, and then pass the player in. But I, I think there's few enough lines of code that we can actually just do this all inside of on trigger enter 2D. So what we need it to do is to A, play the sound effect. That's actually one thing we forgot here. We should also have a audio clip passed in from the inspector. And basically that sound effect will be played at this point in time. So we need to play the sound clip. We need to add the money to the player or the game item to the inventory list if you have that set up. And then we need to destroy this game object. So first off, we take the player, which is not null, and we can 
take its money variable, which in this case is an integer, and add in the money value. So basically, we're taking the money and we're adding it to the player. That's really straightforward there. Also, if you want to do the game item thing, um, once again, this game item, you define it separately, whatever that means. But you could, for instance, create a list of game items called an inventory on the player. And then what you can just do is, if it's defined as a standard list, you can just take the inventory and add the game item to it. So what this means so far is if a game object that has a Collider 2D walks over the trigger area, basically if the two box colliders collide, it's going to see if it has a player. If it has a player controller attached to that game object, it's going to add the money value, and it's also going to add this game item to its inventory. Uh, once again, remember, you have to define the list. So you can see this is a list of game items defined separately on the player controller script. And then we need to play the audio clip. So in order to play the audio clip, we want the audio source to not be attached to the item that's being picked up. Because if the audio source is attached to this game object and we delete the game object immediately afterwards, the sound effect isn't going to be playing because instantaneously after we've told the audio source to play the sound, the audio source has been deleted from the scene. So we shouldn't do something like get component audio source on this game object. You need your audio source to be located somewhere else. So one solution to that and I'll include the script to this, is to use a separate audio manager script. So I've gotten this one developed by Daniel Rodriguez, um, and I've been using it pretty handily. So this audio manager, it exists as a singleton object. So to reference this audio manager, we do audio manager dot instance, and then we can do something like play the audio clip that we've defined up there from uh, the transform on this game object. Now, what's going on here is that the audio manager script, and I'm going to include that in the description so you can download it, it has a public static audio manager instance. So basically, it's supposed to be a singleton object. There should only be one in the scene. And you can reference the instance of it wherever it's attached to um, by just using this instance variable. So in any script you want to reference it, you just do audio manager dot instance, and then you play the clip at the transform. There's a few other methods inside of there. But just to show how I have this set up in the scene, I have a game object called game control, which exists one of in every game scene I have attached here. And then you just attach the audio manager script here. So right after I do this video, I'll also add in another video explaining more about how this audio manager works. But the important thing to take away from this video, regardless of whether or not you're going to use it, is that the audio source where you're going to play the clip from should not be attached to the game object, because otherwise that sound will never play, because as soon as we run destroy game object, which is going to destroy the game object that this script is attached to, everything attached to it, that audio source is going to be gone. So that's why it's really handy to be able to instantly create audio sources on the fly wherever we want them using this audio manager script. But yeah, you can come up with any solution to that that you want. This is just the one I like. So now that we've done that, if we hit play and walk over this, it should remove it from the game scene. It's going to add the game item, which doesn't currently exist to the player. So I only want this script to add money right now because I don't really have game items defined. So I'm going to comment those out. So one last thing we need to do before we actually run the scene is to assign an audio clip to the script. So I'm going to do that over here, just picking out a sound effect, my pickup sound. And once we've done that, we should be able to hit play and walk over this item here, pick it up, and the sound effect should be played and the box will get destroyed. So I made one minor mistake there, which is that it should be player.transform that you use the audio manager to play onto, because when you play this audio clip, the audio source gets added onto the game object of the transform you specify. So if you use this transform that the game object, the item to be picked up is on, that's going to be gone in the same way as the problem we had before, which is if we attach the audio source directly onto the game object, it's going to be deleted with the game object itself when we do this destroy game object. So now that we have a player transform set here, it'll be temporarily added onto the player 
uh, which is fine because it will also be removed as soon as it's done. So let's go ahead and hit play here and try this one more time. Okay, so the sound played. And I just want to confirm one more time without having maximize on play that the audio source gets removed when it's done playing. And as you can see, there is no audio source on the player. So that works out just fine. And uh, just to test the other method where instead of adding money, we add an actual game item to the inventory of the player. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. So with this game object, I can specify a game item. So in my game currently, I have these game items defined as scriptable objects instead of mono behaviors. So in other words, they can be so they can be saved to files and edited as a file on your project directory. So I'm just going to call this a basement key and this item should get added onto the player's inventory. So let's go ahead and hit play here and test that variation. So let's watch the player script here. We currently have an inventory size zero. We walk onto this and the basement key has been added to the player's inventory. So I've been Chris, that's going to be it for this tutorial on how to pick up items or money with sound effects and destroying the game object inside of Unity. I hope this tutorial has helped you guys out. And as I mentioned, the audio manager thing, that will be included as a link in the description and I'll explain it a little bit more in my next video. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my future content.